My beautiful friends it's amanda here and today i'm bringing you two more eye looks with this new nomad palette this is the new zealand stargazing palette i already posted my full swatch and review video where i showed you close-ups i did all different types of swatches brush swatches with flash different lighting that type of thing and i gave you my thoughts on formula and all of that good stuff so if you want more specific information about this palette I'll link that full review in the description box down below so you can just go check that out but today I want to give you two more eye looks there's also an eyeshadow tutorial in my review video I covered a lot of ground there but this palette just has a lot of versatility a lot of different color stories to tell so in my review video I showed you my personal favorite look with this palette which is just a really beautiful sparkly pink and purple look today i'm going to take you in two very different directions i'm going to show you of course this very smoky vampy very blue eyeshadow look definitely this is out of my comfort zone i'll also do a super simplified very warm toned almost neutral peachy type of look because you can go full smoky, full vampy like what I'm wearing right now. You can also do something very straightforward and very everyday type of wear. Although, you know what? If you want to wear this every day, more power to you. I will see you walking through the grocery store and think that you look so glamorous. This is not my everyday, but it is fun to just try a lot of different combinations. So I want to give you a few more eye look ideas with this New Zealand stargazing palette. Let's start with my more simple, almost neutral eye look first, and then we'll work our way up to this very smoky, vampy look. This look is so simple and straightforward. I can see this being a quick go-to daily type of look for me. So I just primed with my Ulta Matte Eye Primer, and then I'm using this very pale peachy matte shade to just basically set that transition area. I'm not gonna be using a whole lot of different shadows, a whole lot of different techniques, but sometimes the more simple looks I think need to be executed more precisely because there's not a lot of layering and distraction. So I'm just setting that transition area and then I'm using this pinky Southern Lights matte shade on a super big fluffy brush. This one is from Singe Beauty. And I'm just really blowing that color out of the crease area. I want it to go up towards my brow bone and also blend it out a little bit to give a little bit of an elongated look to the eye look. I'm not gonna be doing a super contoured eyelid look here. So I'm really relying on the shape of this matte transition type shade to carry a lot of the structure of the look and that's why I'm taking care to blend this a little bit with that peach shade again. I just want it to be very soft and intentional looking. Then I'm using this gorgeous jewel box shade. This has like a peach gold pink multi-chrome effect and I'm not using any sort of really colorful base with this. I'm really going for a very light, airy, ethereal look. This is definitely making me have some springtime vibes and I can see this being just a beautiful year round look. Now I'm combining those two matte shades that I've been using throughout this eye look and I'm just using that to define the lower lash line really lightly. I don't want it to get too heavy down there but I also think that this look needs just a little bit more structure and I also use that combo to define that outer corner just a little bit. I don't want it to be too heavy but I just want to make sure that there is a little bit of structure to this very very basic look. Now I'm using a teeny tiny bit of this white based peachy gold highlighter shade right on the inner corner of the lids there. This would also look lovely as a brow bone highlight. If I wasn't already going to do that in my other look, I probably would have 
gone there with this shade as well and I think this would be very pretty on the cheeks too if you wanted to make a super monochromatic look you could carry that inner corner highlight shade out to the tops of the cheekbones and really make your eye look and cheek look sort of blend into one I think that would be a really pretty way to elevate this super simple look I ended up wearing this look all day and I actually had two people compliment me on my eyeshadow which is saying a lot for such a very very simple look so this is a hit for me for sure. Now you've seen that really simple warm sparkly look let's move on to something that's a little bit more dramatic a lot more dramatic for this very deep dark royal blue smoky look with lashes, with multi-chrome liner. This one's definitely more complex, more layered. So let me show you now how I created this look. For this second look, I'm starting in the same way with my Ulta Matte Eye Primer, but I am going to the complete opposite end of the eyeshadow spectrum. I'm gonna be using a lot of different shades, combining, layering, I'm going to do more cool tones and more deep dark kind of heaviness on the lid a very vampy smoky look whereas the first look was very light and warm and easy breezy this is going to be very sultry there are two gray shades in this palette that i'm going to rely on heavily to do the blending for me this one is more neutral so i'm using that as my base for this look. This is really filling in that transition area and giving me sort of a starting point. And then there is a slightly deeper, more cool toned bluish gray that I'm going to use for defining and also for helping incorporate the gray and the blue together. I'll also be grabbing some of the matte black. So this shade, the Cosmos, this is that deeper more bluish gray is very very integral to this look. I'm layering this on top of that more neutral gray with a more precise fluffy brush and I'm going to start building my depth here first in the crease area focusing more on the outer part of the crease and also down onto the very outer part of the lid. I'm using very small little blending strokes. I'm using a very slow precise building method because I know I'm going to be going hard with a lot of different colors here and if I don't keep control from the very beginning then it gets away from me quickly and I start just having eyeshadow all over my face the colors get too dark they don't blend so I really really like to take my time I do soft light layers small movements some people have all the confidence in the world with these super vampy looks but I don't have that confidence and I don't necessarily wear very colorful or very deep dark looks often so when I do I like to take my time also this is fun for me and I don't have an exact plan in mind I almost never do I knew which colors I wanted to use but I am kind of figuring it out as I use the shades, as I combine the colors. It gives me an idea of where I need to go next, how I need to layer, what colors I might need to blend in to get the tone or the precision that I'm looking for. I guess what I'm getting at is that I'm much better at winging it with eyeshadow than I am with winging it with winged liner, if you know what I'm saying. For example, I combined these two blue matte shades because one was a little bit too primary for me and the other wasn't quite dark and bold enough, but mixed together, they really create the perfect blue that I'm looking for that's going to work with those grays and also with the matte black shade. I didn't add any extra to my brush. These blue pigments are just very, very strong. So I used a little tiny bit of what was left over on my brush and added that very, very close to that lower lash line. And we'll, we're going to blend that out later. I'm going back with that gray combo. Like I said, this is very, very important to 
making sure that my look stays blended and also stays contained to the area that I want it. So I'm going to go back and re-blend and refocus as much as I need to. At least for me, it's a lot easier to blend and figure this stuff out along the way versus just kind of slapping everything on and then trying to figure out how to make it all fit together at the end of the look. I know some people can work like that and I'm always in awe of that type of just technical skill but for me I really need to do my blending at the front of the look versus at the back end of the look. Now that I'm pretty happy with this mapped out matte portion of my look, say that 10 times fast, I'm going to use this gorgeous bright blue shimmery shade called Milky Way and just using my finger to tap that right in the center of the lid. At first I was a little bit nervous because once I started layering this blue on, I felt like the blue shades didn't quite match up to my expectation in my head. They're a little bit too similar in tone. And I was afraid that I was losing some of the definition of my look, but do not fear. That is what the matte black shadow is going to do for us. So I just wanted to make sure I got a super solid coverage on that Milky Way shimmer. Then I went back for just a little bit of a touch up on that blend in the crease. And now I'm taking a very small flat brush and I'm using the matte black shade called Dark Sky Nation and very, very slowly <laughs> building up that matte black shade a little bit over where I put the blues, but I'm keeping the black close to the lash line and letting the blue sort of halo around that matte black shade. I, I hope that makes sense. I didn't want to completely cover up the blue, but I wanted to make sure that I got that high contrast spotlight look on the lid. I was trying to capture that inky blue black sort of indiscernible blue black color of a night sky. Maybe I'm overthinking a little bit here, but that was the inspiration. So I'm going back and forth with the same flat brush with my blue mattes combo on one side and then the black on the other side and just sort of layering over and then just blending out again. When in doubt, I just blend until I figure out what I'm going to do next. That is always my advice when it comes to eyeshadow. I used my gray mixture brush to smudge out my lower lash line and now I'm going to highlight with this pinky purple very soft lavender color. I knew I needed some contrast and I knew I needed a little bit of lightness to relieve all of the deep dark heaviness that is happening on my lids. So I added that on the center of my upper lid. I popped a little highlight onto the lower lash line, more towards the inner part of my lower lash line. And I'm also going to take that same shade and highlight my brow bone right under my eyebrow so that I get a highlighted reflection from all different angles. And it really just creates this beautiful diagonal highlight on the eye that I think is really interesting smudged a little bit of that blue shimmer on the center of the lower lash line. So it's kind of mimicking the layout of the upper lid, but just not quite as complex and not quite as dark. Then I added the ColourPop Ventura Boulevard Multichrome Liner to my lower lashes, a little bit of the e.l.f. Lash Extender Mascara all over top and bottom. And then I decided to pop on some half lashes from Glamnetic. These are in the style Precious. And I think with how deep and dark the eyeshadow is on the lids, these lashes really lend a lot to this look. And you know, I was going for full dramatic, so why not? This is the perfect time for a little false lash in my opinion. And I gotta tell you, I was feeling myself in this look way more than I thought I was going to. I absolutely love it. You know that a palette is really, really good and interesting if it gets me into lashes, liner, and blue all in the same look. 
That's something special. There's something to be said for that. I love all the different eye looks that I've done with this palette so far. As you can probably tell from the non-existent little images that used to be in the pans and are now mostly gone, I've had the chance to use this quite a bit and I've really enjoyed it. Like I said, if you want more of my thoughts on this palette, go check out my review video. I do have an affiliate code with Nomad Cosmetics, so if you are looking to pick up this palette, the New Zealand Stargazing palette, or some of their others, they have so many good palettes, then you can always use my code AMANDA to save 10% on the Nomad site. I feel like this is another hit. They had two palettes in my best of palette video from the end of 2023, one of which was in my number two ranked spot. So I'm just excited to see what else they have to offer because they really do keep me interested. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think. Which one of these looks was your favorite? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! So much blue, so much lashes. It's a lot for me. Shh. Let's try that again. And today I'm bringing you, bringing you, bringing a blah blah blah. <laughs> I like how I did the highlight on my brow bone in the center of the lid and then right here so it gives this lightness to a very otherwise heavy kind of dark look. It's like comic relief in a dramatic movie. You just need a little highlight sometimes, you know? Gosh, it's gonna start raining. I know Maggie's gonna lose her little mind. She still hates rainstorms. Poor thing. I just want to be covered in shimmers. I have the ColourPop Twilight collection. I don't know what order all of my videos are going to go up. I had to do a bunch of pre-filming, so I don't know. I'm not going to get to a lot of stuff on time. That's just the way it goes, but I'll get this one done though in time. This Nomad one. I need book recommendations for anybody who watches to the end, because not a lot of people watch the purely eye look videos and then even fewer people watch all the way to the end so I know that it's the real ones that are left here for real the real MVPs are left now I need your book recommendations I don't love like fantasy sci-fi but maybe if it's like more magical fantasy and not as much sci-fi outer space fantasy I can get down with that I prefer like one-off stories. I don't love getting addicted to a series, but if it's like a trilogy, maybe, but I don't want to start into a book series that has like 10 books because I did that with the Suki Stackhouse books, the ones that True Blood are based off of, and it took over my life in an unhealthy way. <laughs> I can admit that. So I'm not really looking to go back to that but I need some good books. I prefer fiction, but I'll read nonfiction, especially if it's like a biography or an autobiography, but I'm kind of down for whatever. I don't care if it's YA. I don't care if it's something. I like really weird books. I like a lot of offbeat books. I like romance. I like fluffy, corny, mystery, thrillers. I, I like all kinds of stuff me your book recommendations because I'm running low. I did so well on my book challenge last year that my to be read list is, I mean, it's still always long, but a lot of things I'm on a wait list at my library for. So I just always need more recommendations. Thank you. Here I am just started a new year and I'm already wearing blue eyeshadow and lashes. I look pretty cute. I think. I don't know. This isn't my absolute favorite look that I've done with the palette, but it looks way better than I thought I was going to. And I feel like the lashes really took it to another level. Just don't look too closely. My lash application is never perfect, but you know what? We're out here. We're doing our best. We're on a journey. Okay. That is it for now. I'm going to have lots more videos coming soon. I have a lot of things I'm excited about to review, to talk about. I have a lot of fun ideas for this year. so. We're starting off strong. And I hope you feel the same way.
because you're awesome and I love your face and I will see you in the next one soon. Bye.